Okay, so all the live action scenes are filmed. And this diary is going to be about all these scenes, small scenes too, that we filmed throughout the last couple of months, but that we didn't talk about yet. So let's see what we have. After we filmed everything that we needed the car for, we decided to add one small scene of the cop inside of his car. And basically since we have only one car, we just redressed it to look uh, a bit different. So a couple of friends uh, came by and brought their oscilloscopes and other equipment that I know nothing about. And we filmed Dragon Rage inside of his car while he's eating ribs. And we invented the Happy Pig brand. Yeah, because, I don't know, it's funny. We also filmed one insert of the cop character breaking the window on the car. If we would break the real window on the car, uh, we would just have one take, right? And of course we wanted to repeat it a couple of times, just to be safe. Uh, so we ordered a couple of um, glasses at the glass store, cut out the size of the window, and we taped them on the outside of the door. And then he was supposed to smash it with his elbow. Yeah, for the other take we wanted to change things a little bit and we said like why don't you try breaking it with the gun? <laughs> Made in Croatia. <laughs> the glass just felt the rage of the dragon rage. Sometimes it's going cold. Another scene that we filmed was uh, the back alley scene and that was actually really interesting because we went out of the garage and we, we were filming on the real location that we rented. Shabish, tell me who are you playing? I'm playing a chef. A chef? A fat chef. <laughs> are you excited? No. <laughs> so we are filming a very very small back alley scene. It's only like three shots, three shots in the, in the whole sequence. But for this filming we have everything. Like we have tons of lighting, we have uh, firefighters that brought uh, water, they're making rain, we have smoke, we have tons of stuff, ventilators blowing crap all over. So it's like a proper movie shoot. And, uh, and of course, as it usually goes, it was freezing and it was snowing outside. And for each take, Miran had to step out into the freezing rain wearing only a tank top. He's getting inside of his character. But still, I like it. Yeah, it's especially good when it's rain and it's like minus two outside. <laughs> the last, uh, the last scene that we filmed just a couple of days ago was the nightclub scene. We wanted to have a cool nightclub where our guy would meet somebody. So naturally, we went all over the city in search of the nightclub that we could rent. And after seeing all of them, we decided that it would be best if we just built the nightclub in our garage. So that's what we did. We went to the hardware store, we bought just a lot of neon lights and a lot of materials. We are constantly on the lookout for cheap things that are big and can, you know, and can fill up a lot of space. Oh, that's cool. It uh, really beautifully reflects light. Yeah. When thinking which aesthetic are we going to take for the nightclub, we decided we're going to go for Egyptian Rococo Oriental Baroque Sci-Fi. Yeah, so basically we can do whatever we want. That's why we have candles. Here's the Russian samovar, nargila as well. An elephant, of course. We bought most of the stuff for the film, but yes. we're still missing the main glass that the actress is gonna drink from. We, we gotta go to the mall to find some cool glass. And <laughs> Dino found something. <laughs> he just combined some stuff. And this is how you create the most beautiful and elegant drink in the universe. Pyramid cocktail. <laughs> It's not just a drink, it's art. But I guess we're gonna have a pyramid cocktail then, yeah? This is like a, some kind of a paravan that I built just quickly. And you can put some people behind them, or if you puff a lot of smoke, you can shoot the lights through these holes, so it's gonna look cool. As always, the most important thing was the lighting. Dino, I think Dino counted 24 
light sources in the scene. We had eight devil lights that we always use, but apart from that we also rented movie heads. It's a, it's a concert light that shoots like lasers all over the place. We dressed 20 extras, put them in the background, you know, lit all the candles up. Uh, actually, you know, it, it kind of looks like a club. So since we have only one wall in the background that's actually like look, looking good, uh, and we need to film a shot of the actor and then reverse shot of the actress, uh, we decided we're just gonna turn around the whole bar, you know, rotate it, and then film towards the same wall again. When you go low, they know where to go. shot that Dino wanted to shoot when the camera is following a girl throughout the crowd. If you would move just one inch on either side there would be nothing there. We just planned the shot to completely utilize everything that we built and every single person that we had. And, oh, and, and as always we used a lot of foreground. We would put tiny Christmas lights in foreground and then when they get blurred you have this huge bokeh but it fills your shot even more. So, you know, it's not only the actors that you film, it's, uh, it's also what's behind them, what's in front of them. And we had like a lot of layers in between. So, after we filmed the majority of the stuff with the actors, we started filming the, one of the most important elements in our film, the close-ups. In normal films where, where people talk, uh, they just say stuff to each other and you know what's happening. But here we have a silent film in a way and uh, that's why we have to show everything. So for illustration purposes only, imagine a scene that goes like this and pardon my acting skills. I brought the money, now let Johnny go. Okay, so with just one camera angle and with one line of dialogue, we were able to learn that he's speaking to somebody, that he brought the money, and that somebody named Bobby is kidnapped by the other guy. Or maybe it was Johnny, I don't know, never mind. Okay, so now let's see how that scene would look if you had no dialogue. Well, right at the beginning you gotta show the other guy, because otherwise you don't know that he's there. When he opens the box, you gotta show the money in close-up, otherwise you don't know it's the money. And you gotta show Bobby as well, and now you start to connect there's some kind of a ransom thing going on. <laughs> and, and it's actually pretty hard to get complicated information across this way. First of all, we have four times more shots. The eye lines are very important because they give you information where is everybody in the space. And the close-up of the money actually showed you what the whole scene is about. So we are making a whole film without dialogue and we rely on close-ups all the time. So that's why I'm in the costume because I'm doubling for our, our main actor. I am actually the hand model. Yeah, and uh, if you're wondering why he has this uh, shirt under the actor's shirt, it's because Anton was very sweaty. So we had tons and tons of stuff that we needed to film, you know. The hands holding money, hands holding drugs, taking something out of the compartment, texts writing on the monitors that we filmed with motion control system, a hand holding a paper that's burning. <laughs> A detail of the hand punching an ATM screen. Plexiglass is quite sharp, by the way. And now it's time for the slice of life bomb squad. We had a couple of pyrotechnic shots again where the camera was supposed to burst in the flames. And we did like 50 takes and we couldn't get the shot. This is take 67 and we are going to succeed! Total. Yes, so yeah, yeah, success! And we are of course taking great care for every shot that we're making. We do long setups, you know, a couple of hours setting up the lights. After three hours of setup we don't really like the shot, so <laughs> we're probably gonna go fix it some more. Mojo is most important, to gain back your mojo. So today we are filming uh, close-up shot number 1757. 
So we needed to create a really cool uh, spy camera in the shot. We made it out of trash, like everything else. So we mounted this prop camera on the motion control slider that we have. And now it moves in a very uh, robotic way. And of course, we always like to fill the shot with all these neon lights. So these two uh, tiny lights th that are dispersed in the background are actually two small LEDs taped to a screwdriver because our stand uh, wouldn't go high enough. So we had to invent something. Lord, ain't no light, that's the way. Oh, and actually this is interesting. Way back we filmed this noodle bar scene where our guy was supposed to order some food. Uh, and now we decided this scene could fit into the story a lot better if he um, sells the drugs to the chef. So we recreated one small part of the bar. So we have lots of stuff in the background. You can see the neon lights, they give us a uh, nice reflections in the table. We have a small water boiler that produces steam. And also we have a couple of glasses in the foreground. And in the end the shot looks like this. And we filmed two hands just sliding drugs and money over the bar. When you cut it into the film you can never tell. It's a couple of years apart. It, it actually just goes to show how you can manipulate the film medium and it's how, how beautiful it actually is. So yeah, the miniature filming will be the next thing we do. And uh, I'm just getting back to finishing this diary. Bye. Last poor man turned out the light